Hello and welcome to Springboard, your virtual university. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of Team Springboard, led by Comfort. Springboard is your most inspirational show and the point of convergence for the greatest minds. Your virtual university is brought to you by the Springboard Racial Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, UMB Bank, the Enterprise Group, and with media support from the graphic business. I have the VGMA 2021 Best Gospel Song of the Year, Best Gospel Artist of the Year, Most Popular Song of the Year, and overall, the Artist of the Year, Diana Hamilton in the house. Diana, good to see you. Good to see you, Reverend. It must have been a whirlwind week for you. <laughs> it's been proper manic. <laughs> That's, that's the best word for that for me, um, but I'm enjoying every bit of it, I have to say. I Enjoy. can imagine that when you set out on this journey, did you, or this ministry, this call, when you responded to the call, did you ever envisage a day like this when the whole world will focus its attention on you? No, I have to say this. It was, for me, it's never been about where I'm going. It's always been about enjoying the now, giving my all the now, and then trusting the hand of he who keeps me to take care of the rest. And so when I am writing a song, take for instance, writing a song, I'm thinking, who is it going to bless? Tell me about your parents. Was your dad a, a, a Pentecost minister? My dad was an apostle of the church. So right. I was born before he became a minister. So I watched him go through all the ranks. An overseer, a pastor, then an, an, a national head, then an apostle, then an area head then an executive member right. until nearing his retirement when he passed. Right. What's his name? Apostle F. E. N. G. Right. So your so your your ministry roots were gained from your dad. Oh yes. Um I think when I get a few people saying if I was a man I would have been like my dad. So maybe there are some similarities. <laughs> I, I would think that gender doesn't take it away at all. <laughs> Do you, do you find yourself at critical moments of your life thinking, what would he have done or what, what would he approve of? Do you, do you think about him? I, some... think, I think I, I got to know him so much, I know what he would have done. We went to the chairman of the Church of Pentecost office. And when we got there, the chairman said, I wish old man was here. Oh. We were close. Yeah, he named me after his, his mom. And so we were close. But he's such a great that he was close to all his kids. I'll tell and you what, he's smiling upon you in heaven. He is. Yes. Talking about chairman, it was beautiful to see chairman endorse you even before mm. the award to say mm. he believes in your ministry. How did, yeah. how did that make you feel? The apostle the, himself saying that he, himself he endorsed saying, you for the award. So I say Apostle Professor Pokonina is not just my apostle. He's my, my dad. He was very close to my dad. And since my dad passed, he never left me. He's basically assumed that position of a ministry dad. The beauty of it is when somebody that close to you still believes in you, then you know. it's Because when you're doing spiritual things and you're a human being, sometimes when, you, when somebody is close to you and they get to see your humanness, it's difficult for them to accept your spiritual things. But for them to actually believe and still appreciate what we're doing and support it, that was very satisfying for me and very encouraging as well. Let's explore how you best onto the, the music scene because mm. so you, you started from singing in church mm. singing in one branch to another. and what was your first recording when i did my first performance at 13 by 14 i was doing professional singing wow i said so, full time i know full time but um, i i call it professional because that's when i started being paid for it and, wow. and stuff like that but um yes when i was at dr wyatt there was also um, an elder of the church in dr wyatt who had a prayer camp called the Macedonia Prayer Center. And it was very close to my house. So we'd, we'd go there. And I had the, you know, when the singing is in you, whenever you see a microphone, you jump to it. So I jumped onto the microphone while I was there. And the one of the elders, now known Francis A.J., was there. And he was about to release his first album, of uh, Mitchell Botaimi. Right. And then he picked me to be his backing vocalist. You ready? Did you know Reggie so don't be... Yes. You sang in that one? I did. Wow. <laughs> you know how interesting it is when you, you come onto the scene and people think... You, where have you been? You, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, sang, we sang it so much that it became uh, like a routine. Where song. Yeah, but, uh, the voice is gone today, but yeah. 
Day by day, come with me. I did that song. Come by the power of God. Yes. Oh, okay. I did that with Pentecostal praises. I actually sang that part um, with Pentecostal praises, by which time I had actually done about two albums with Francis already. Amazing. Yes. I, I sang sh sh 10 straight years with Francis, just being, being a BV with him. So anybody who was around the time Francis was would know that I was a little girl, but I was with Francis. So yeah, we did that, and then at that time I was I was training to be a nurse as well. So I finished nursing. I got married. And whilst I was in nursing school, at the early stages of nursing school, I was still singing with Francis. So much so sometimes I'll leave school and go sing. Was, was it in Ghana or UK? In Ghana. Right. I was in Confanoche, and um, my executive producer now was a church member of the Kumasi PRWC, and he. He actually got to know me from Francis AJ's album. I have a great relationship with the Kumasi PIDBC. I, sp I, I spoke there quite a few times. We oh. actually held our, held our first springboard in Kumasi in, in okay. PIDBC. So oh, wow. I have okay. some great friends there. All right. So if there was ever a place I mastered my craft, it would be Accra PIWC and Kumasi PIWC. Right. Tell us As about the so mastery. I don't even know. I don't know. I, I said mastered and I'm thinking, but... <laughs> it's a good word. Okay. I'm curious about behind the scenes, mm. and I'll explain a bit more of it as we go along. Mm. But give us an idea about mastery. What does it require? What, what do you do behind the scenes? Because you sing a song for just five minutes. Mm. I mean, really. But a lot goes into it behind I'm the scenes. I'm curious about what goes on behind the scenes. Okay, so as a child, I mentioned my dad. My dad was very keen in my ministry. Anybody who knows my dad knows that when I'm singing and he's behind me, you can't sit because he's charged, he's on his feet, he'll be on your feet. He, he, so he was very interested in what I did, so much I'll discuss what I was writing with him. He was a singer as well, he was a worship leader when the pastors met. Wow. And so he had music background, had a beautiful voice. And there was a woman in the Church of Pentecost called Eunice Addison. She received most of Church of Pentecost's songs by inspiration during prayer time. And so my dad took me to her and asked her to pray for me. Oh. And um, when, I, when I went there, it was, it was in church after church, and I knelt beside her, and she was a fanti. So she asked, You want to sing? The songs are in heaven. It's a lot in heaven urban in verses and in stanzas. They come in verses and in stanzas. Then she hit me on the back and she said, get up and go sing. I can just almost imagine it. I'm, I'm a fancy man, so I can relate to these words very and much. <laughs> a very educated, posh woman, talking. Yes. <laughs> she just hit me on the back and said, oh, up and in verses and in stanzas. Wow. And she hit you on the back. She on the back. And that was the prayer. Yeah. <laughs> what did it do for you? At that time, nothing. At that time, I didn't know what it was. Just now that I've grown that, it hit me. But then, what I remember significantly then was when I got up, my dad said, Daini, did you hear what she said? She said, the songs come in verses and in stanzas. So I never want to hear you sing a two-worded song. Wow. And so every time I try to write a simple song, it never happens for me because by the time I'm done, I have a verse, I have a stanza, I have a bridge, I have a chorus. I have... So now I realize that, yes, it takes me a while to write. I don't receive by inspiration. Like, a, I don't receive it with words and, and chords and everything. But God gives me a message. And then I put flesh on it and he helps me by his word. But going back to what happened behind the scenes. So when I heard this and I was with Francis, I had a chance to sit under the ministry of singers like Daughters of Glorious Jesus, Susie and Matt. I watched them do certain things. Dr. Mary Ganza. And I had their CDs. I learned their songs. At that time, that's all I knew. And then as I progressed, I got interested in American gospel. And so I would listen to C.C. Winans, I would listen to Alvin Slaughter. I never learned music, but I tried to learn what they're doing, look at their lifestyle, try to live my life, be myself, but also live to please God. Then back to the church, mastering my craft. 
The Church of Pentecost will never give you heads up, will never tell you you're singing today. They see you in church and they call you. So like a soldier, you should be ready at all times. So whenever I'm going to church, I have prayed. I have a song or two in mind that when I'm hit with it, I know when to pick it up and what to sing. Wow. But I'm also praying that, Father, give me a song that goes with the word that is coming today. I don't want to be going north where your word is going south. Then we're not in tune. And I'll never ask my dad what he's preaching about. But the song I'll sing will always be close, similar to the word that is coming. Did he ever, on a particular day, say, no, I didn't like that one. You got it wrong. You, you, you missed out on, on, on the direction my ministry was going that day. And, and my he... dad will never be that blatant with me because I was named after his mom. So he was, one would say, no, Ferem Kakra. So he go, Daini, and then our bread. Ah, then you get the message. Then you get them. <laughs> You know, I'm interested in those parts. You <laughs> no, know, tell me. Because those are the parts on the journey where we miss most of the lessons. Mm. Because it didn't go too, go too well. well. And the person oh, I... guiding you must never have a problem telling you that. They won't oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think saying that I have a family who would support me, who would pray for me. Oh, but they can be very harsh with their comments. Tell me about that one. <laughs> My sister, Victoria, will not sleep until I've left the stage. My mother will not sleep until I've left the stage. But when I'm done, she would come and tell me, Victoria would say, Auntie, and that's how she would go, Auntie, if you're on that stage, don't address this man like that. Mm. You don't say it that way. And when you're singing, you do it this way. It's, she go, it's just nice to be nice. They're, they're, they're very blunt with me like that and you love them like that oh i do because when it's good they tell me i think that's help me to trust you help me to believe you so that when it can be all bad so when it's good let me know i think the sanguine part of me likes the fans so i'm okay with the fans when it's bad let me know but when it's all bad bad oh you can cry <laughs> But they'll tell you, you know, you, you don't have to feel like that. You don't have to talk like that. I had known Pastor Wingham for years. The first time I met him was at um, OK um, FM. And so when I was on stage, I was trying to recollect how we met. And, and I said, I've known Pastor Wingham for a couple of years. About, and I said, about 10 years ago. So when I was done, my sister called and said, Auntie, I'm going to go to the you mean that much detail? Oh, yes. <laughs> but, 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 but it's a blessing to have a team like that behind you, isn't it? Oh, yes. yes. Tell me about mentoring. You've mentioned, you've mentioned three people that have caught my attention very strongly. Mm. You mentioned your dad, mm. and may God bless his soul. Mm. You mentioned Madame Addison, who mm. got many Any of the songs. Church of Pentecost songs. Mm. And then you've mentioned Francis, oh, and how you if I may use that word, served him for mm, 10, 10 years. years. That brings the principle of mentoring to the fore so strongly. Mm. How important is it for somebody seeking to get to the top to allow themselves to be mentored? It's so important. And I think in recent times, people don't want to finish the mentoring stage. They don't want to be mentored and they just want to get to the top. As I said, I served Francis for 10 years. And for 10 years, I was just happy to be singing with him. Whether he gave me a part to lead or not, I was just happy. I was a little girl. And I was never looking at when I was going to get my shine or when I was going to be better than he was. And if there was one thing I learned or an experience I gained from serving him was one, waiting. And then also the chance to be around producers and singers. And my dad would have, my dad introduced me to pastors in the church, but Francis introduced me to the industry. And so that was one thing I got from Francis. And then from my dad, just being mentored by him was how he lived a single standard life. When I say it, 
whatever you saw was what you got. Obviously, I knew him at home. And then also I knew him at church. And the fact that I was able to say he's a pastor at home and a pastor at church mm. was something and is something I still want to be known for. That I'm a minister at home and a minister at church. What you see is what you get. That I don't live one life in front of the cameras and when the doors are shut and the lights are off, I'm a different person. I think I've lived to realize that every stage of my life has actually opened the door for the next stage. And if I had missed just one spot of the things that happened to me, I wouldn't be here sitting with you. That sounds scary. It is. And I'll tell you, I can give you... Help us understand at least one or two because this is so weighty that you can't let it pass. Every stage <laughs> Every of, stage of my life, life has landed has... me where I am. And we, if we had taken out one, one, I wouldn't have been here. Almost like a puzzle. Yes. Help us to understand. So, I'll fast forward to I was in Morningstar. I was smart in Morningstar. And I was on my way to go to Wesley Girls. And at that year, I did great. I had nine ones. Just that particular year, I was told Wesley Girls is taking ten ones for science. Well, my dad was on missions. He was in Sierra Leone. And so my dad wasn't here. If my dad had been in Ghana, I would have gone to Wesley Girls and I would have done science. Or they would have said, don't do science, do arts. If I'd gone to Wesley Girls and done arts, I wouldn't have gone to nursing school because they wouldn't have taken me on arts. If my dad had been here, maybe I wouldn't have done nursing. If I hadn't done nursing, I wouldn't have met my husband. If I hadn't met my husband, I wouldn't have known anybody that can handle ministry with me like my husband is handling ministry with me. If I hadn't done nursing, I wouldn't have lived in the UK working as a nurse with my husband and the kids, which is the central part of the world, which gives me maximum seven hours to almost every part of the world. I pick up my passport and I have access to everywhere in the world. So if Pentecost had not sent my father to Sierra Leone, my father is pushy and he would have moved Diana to any secondary school to do any course he wanted. But God was playing my life like a table of chess. And so at Ghana National College, I had the chance to perfect my solo performance. I had a headmaster who gave me the freedom to do ministry, but still learn. I then went to the right schools, met the right, because I'm working with my executive producer. And I told you that I met him when I was in nursing school. So if my father had been in Ghana, I wouldn't have gone to Ghana National College. If I hadn't gone to Ghana National College, I wouldn't have gone to nursing school. If I hadn't gone to nursing school, I wouldn't have met my husband, I wouldn't have met my executive producer, and I wouldn't have been here. It is such a humbling story you tell that that part alone, that part, it's only like a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> almost like a rhyme. So we hear you and come and hear you. Oh, lovely. It, it, Honestly. Almost to be a, the lyrics of a song. <laughs> No, but because I've stayed with my executive producer for over 20 years. And I think people would say, oh, you stayed together for that long. And what's the, what's the secret? What's the, we were just meant to be doing this. And that's the power of having the right people around the you. The right people. I'm going to come back to that when I come back from this spring. But if you just joined us, this is Springboard Adventure University. And I've, I've just been listening to the lyrics of a potential song. <laughs> With my guest for today, and you, she needs absolutely no introduction. We've not even spoken about her award yet. We just are getting into the engine room because <laughs> the story of the award has been well told. But who is Diana Hamilton, and what does she crack behind the scenes? The what, the why, the where, including the pat on the back, sorry, cut you know, in verses and stanzas. When I come back from this break, I'm going to find out from Diana. What next? what the award did, and very importantly, her ambassadorial role with the Enterprise Life or the Enterprise Group. Please don't worry. In a world where you can be anything, who will you
you become. When you can go anywhere and never be alone, how far will you go? When your voice can reach every ear in the world, who will you inspire? When your money can travel faster and further, who will it reach? When you can tell a story in every language, which one will you tell? When you don't need permission to turn your dreams into reality, you go for it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, go. And when you think you've reached your limit, we'll keep you going. Let's go. There once was a man who had it all. He had skill. He had charisma. He was loved by all, but above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. The essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Is that a verse or a stanza? Or is a new sorry or is to, it a bridge? You know, <laughs> if you if you just joined us, it's been an explosive first part of the program with Diana Hamilton just giving us the Genesis, the Exodus, the Leviticus, the Numbers, and the Deuteronomy of her ministry. We've had a beautiful time. And I'm going to come back to Diana for, 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 for the award for life after and, and what next. Diana, how, how important is setting your priorities to be able to reach the heights that you are, God has blessed you to be in? Um, one, it's knowing what you're about, you know, what you're looking to God for, and then working towards it. There can be a lot of distractions, and it's very important that we stay focused on the things that we do. I think I said to you that I'm a sanguine, and sometimes I'm a helpless one. But I always have to come back and say, Diana, keep calm. Get the things that matter, i.e. ministry, family, marriage, profession. These are things I'm looking at, and I think I pray to God all the time. That people can say somebody's a jack of all trade, master of none. But if God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think of, I'm asking him to cause me to win in all areas. It doesn't just come in a day. Tell me about marriage and family. I'm very interested. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. And then I'm a wife and I'm a mother. Forgive me for mentioning my dad over and over and over, but he was in ministry and he was in missions but whenever he whenever he was with us if you had to invite my dad it wasn't about the charge it was about accommodation for him and his kids because he told me i'm only here for two weeks and i'm not leaving them the two weeks to come preach they are not coming with me and so if he was here for two weeks he made it count and so that's my priority now that wherever i am if it's with the kids i will make motherhood count with the kids mm. So that when I'm away, 
they're looking forward to the next one. But when I'm with ministry too, I give it my all. So that when I'm away with the family, ministry will also remember that when I'm coming, I'm coming full force. Wow. And so I'm trying with my husband, trying with the kids, working, making it work, being on the phone. And I think my family has come to realize that when I'm in Ghana or when I'm in America, they are fine with me. But when I'm in Ghana, they will not worry me much because then I'm, ministry is boom, boom, boom. But when I'm in the UK and their sister is back, their wife is back, their mother is back, I am giving it my all. Priorities, not trying to mix ministry and family. When it's family time, it's family time. These are priorities I've, I've set. And so far, by the grace of God, we're winning. Do you miss them when you're, you're here? Ooh, I do. Wow. I do, I do, I do, I do. We yes. salute your family for loaning you to us to yes. give them great blessing. Yes, I say this, that my husband is a reg and he doesn't... I think people around us will say that he's not... It's not your normal kind of guy. He's rare. When you count your blessings, I'm sure you count that. Ooh, I think he's one of them. He's the first one. <laughs> let's, let's go to the, the night everyone, everyone said yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. What was the first word that came out of your mouth when your name was mentioned? For the artist of the year? Yes. Jesus is cool like that. <laughs> oh, man. You know, just the words, the physiology, the terminology. Jesus is cool like that. Yeah, he's cool. He he has a sense of humor. He's interested humor. in the very little things of our lives. And when he says he will place you at the place he's destined for you, he will do it. And um, he's such a showman. Because in Psalm 23, he said he will lay a table before you in the presence of. So he will. Oh, you're more your fair. Oh, I'm for. I'm for. That's not it. I wasn't going to talk about it. But then he. When God is blessing you, okay, so I tell you, when I gave birth, when I, when I got married, it took me almost six years before I had the twins. Wow. And by the time I had the twins, the whole world knew I didn't have children. So the whole world came to look. That's I'm like, Jesus, I'm really shook. I cry, mm. <laughs> so it's something like that. Did that birth a song? Oh, yes, loads of them. Um, Give me one of them. So that one when you're home and so. Okay. And at that time when the twins came, well, prior to them coming, um, I went in, I had a banter with God and I said to him, um, if he didn't come through for it was me, like I was a conversation. Yeah, it was a conversation. My mother would say, when, it, when pushing comes to shove, put a chair down and sit Jesus down and talk to him. One day, and I said, if, if it's not going to happen, then, you know, I don't have a message, so let it happen. And I think I put God, I wrote a testimony song to God. And the song was like, Madansi dear near Miss Munyamia Otsiasi, Yamia or Mabunini Wontano, Waya Mami Obeya Mao. And I had written that song when I wasn't pregnant, when I had never been pregnant. I, had, I didn't know I was going to have a, a one child or two, but I sang that I had twins. I wrote, oh, yeah, I did. I wrote that song. Way before I got pregnant. Is, is that why people relate to your music like that? Maybe. <laughs> you, you, you tell their story in your song. Yeah, yeah. I because my mom, my mom celebrated a, her 82nd birthday mm. recently. Okay. And we just went to have a worship session with her in the morning. Okay. And she put a dumb non-stop non-stop she, she played about 10 times oh, wow and you know the first line of the song i don't look like what i've been through i don't look like what i've been through look mm -hmm. what she has survived my goodness what, she, she died twice in the past five years she died wow. which, both of them were thursday she died and rose again oh, wow so she just was smiling like that <laughs> just smiling i've been there I done that look, i don't look like what i've been through and i, I have no plan of going now but you know i just and I, I just look at the contentment on her face and say, mm. I understand why you wrote the song. Mm. People like that to see, yes. I, I, I hear and I, I feel I think, and I know. I think we hear it a lot that you've prayed our prayer in a way we never thought we could. Mm. Or you've sung our praise in a way that we felt but didn't know how to articulate it. You know, for the benefit of those who have not heard Adum, let me just play it for, for two minutes, two minutes. That won't feel as only a It's important. <laughs> So I 
farewell. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adum, adum, wadum. I've been through a lot, but grace sustained me. My test is now a testimony. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adum, adum, wadum. It was you, my lawyer in that courtroom. It was you, my soldier on that battlefield. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adum, adum, wadum. Welcome back to Springboard Adventure University and I had to pause and play Adum just and dedicate it to my eight two year old mother Dora Okran because she would have never forgiven me if I, <laughs> I hadn't done that because if I brought if without the artist she enjoyed the song ten times, then if I bring the person herself <laughs> to the studio, I must give two minutes to Dora Okran and play the song Adum. That's to all of you who love Adum and from your previous interview, all those who made Adum their DP yes. just to let, help just, you win that award. It was amazing. Tell me how did it feel to be going into a contest? Let me use the word a contest for the benefit of our viewers and listeners. A contest like the VGMA, it being the most high profile music awards in the country, knowing that you had been there in the previous years, 2019 won Gospel Song of the Year, Gospel Artist of the Year, 2021 Gospel Artist of the Year, correct? Mm -hmm. Now you're going into 2021, and you're going for the ultimate. And yeah. you, you will agree that there are probably four others who. Mm -hmm. are equally, equally. qualified mm -hmm. and going into that and feeling the energy and the momentum behind you of, of so many people just cheering you on I, I was saying that the love was palpable you could you could feel that people were emotionally attached to this it was never about me it was just about how blessed the song had been how much of a blessing the song had been to them and how much Asante ni meka se mbo aboso di mechi. That aboso is that what makes them what what makes them bored aboso? What makes them no idea? Do you know that's that's grace, that's a merited favor. But that's a very powerful force. That that's I'm a powerful at. force, and um, I think it was just God was making a statement that I am actually cool like that. I can when I want my daughter to do it, I cause. I can cause her to do it. I can, I can use anybody. I can pick anybody from nowhere and use them. He picks us up from the Mary Clay, then he sets our feet on a solid ground, on a higher ground. And this, was, this is biblical. This is Bible being told. So when, when you look at... Because somebody's listening tonight and saying, mm -hmm. when you are blessed and you mm -hmm. talk, and those of us who have not made Me, it, mm -hmm. what do you have to say to people who, either in music... Mm. In theater, drama, mm. authors, people pursuing their careers who are Has, it hasn't that happened it hasn't yet. Happened for them yet. What would you say to them? So I'll tell you this, and if you're listening, watch it and listen. When I wasn't getting awards, glory to God, I was always getting nominations with all my other albums, with the exception of um, Work in Progress because it was out of the calendar year. And when I never had it, nobody can ever say I stood anywhere and condemned anyone or anything. Neither did I condemn anybody who was at the top. But I watched, I appreciated what they did and the oil upon people's lives and their craft. 
And I didn't copy, but I think whatever you attract, you actually end up, whatever you respect, you attract. And I think I respected a lot of people at the top and I appreciated what they were doing. And I knew that it was only a matter of time. But even if that time doesn't come, the purpose of God for my life would definitely be fulfilled. And so, like I said, I enjoyed every moment and I trusted the hand of he who sent me. I was never eyeing or looking down or bowed mouthing or um, fault picking. I was just in utter appreciation of what God was doing in other people's life and I applauded them. I applauded mm. whoever did it well. Mm. Mm. And I, I would share, I would watch. There were ministrations of people I now call colleagues that I watched from beginning to end over and over and over, over. And I'd go on YouTube and watch people, their ministration, something they had done somewhere. At that time, YouTube wasn't as out there as it is now. Right. But I would watch anything that was on social media. And I remember one thing my manager said to me, as much as you learn how to do something, learn how not to do something. Mm. So whilst you're watching something, if somebody's doing something that is not good, pick it, not to do it, but tell yourself, I'll never do this. Don't condemn that person. Say that again. As much as, as, you, much learn, as you learn how to do something, learn how not to do something. I think I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so these are things I picked up. Let me go to your role with Enterprise Life. Mm. We've had a great relationship with Enterprise Life for years. Mm. And we've also observed your ministry for years and yes. celebrated the work God is doing with Do your life. We? And then all of a sudden, boom, this year we saw yourself and Kofi Kinata. Mm. And Kofi won Songwriter of the Year four times. I mean, he, he's probably, you should take that one home. <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> said he's bought a land in that spot. Yeah, yeah I think he's just <laughs> come his car there. Winter man. <laughs> but uh, we saw both you and... Um, so you both were big winners on the night, but mm. we saw you and Kinata announced as, as brand, brand ambassadors. ambassadors. Mm. How has it been so far? <laughs> it's been amazing. I, whenever I'm asked this, I say it started from an, an ordinary phone call, and right. then we're here. Um, Tell me about that. So there was, it was like a, a late morning. Um, I think I was getting ready either to do a live something or to go somewhere. And I had a call, and it was um, Gideon. Saying he's been struggling to reach me and that he's gone everywhere for my number. I said, I'm not that difficult, difficult to, to get. find at all. <laughs> but yeah, and then he, they said they wanted to um, work with me. They wanted me as a brand ambassador. So after the conversation ended, I called my PA and I said, um, Enterprise Life just called that they want me to be their brand ambassador. And she said, they're such great guys. I have a policy with them. This is about the biggest, one of the biggest companies in this country. I mean, did, did she remind you of that? <laughs> she, for me, it was the fact that someone that close to me had a first-hand experience with them. Right. For and me, she, and I she think. she had a policy. And she had a policy with them, and she was speaking so highly of them. And I thought, okay, that is God telling me this is where to go. Because, yes, you get these calls, and then you begin to weigh it. Should I? Should I not? But then... Everything else went smooth from there onwards. You know, I like their excellence, the, how they, they, they work towards achieving excellence, the integrity, delivering on promises they're making. And I thought, this is something that I relate to. This is something that I stand for. Right. And so it's been a great relationship. Kofi Kinata, myself, the Enterprise Group, the Enterprise Life Group, right. Jackie, Jackie Benny and... Jackie, Jerry, Kelly, Jerry, yes, Phyllis. Amazing, I, I, it's great. a dangerous thing I'm doing if I start mentioning this and I leave yes, out some. So yeah, let me just play safe. Patrick and everybody, I'm greeting all of you. Yes. Let, let's let's come to let's come to your brand. Mm. For you to become an, a brand ambassador. ambassador, you must have a brand. There mm. must be something about you that mm. people can connect to. Coming to the point where people take you so seriously. Let me use mm. your words. Abosso, they, oh, my boy, Abosso. <laughs> they tie their knot to you mm, and they swear on everything mm, mm. Diana Hamilton. Does, so, it, does it put a burden on you? No, it doesn't. I, I have to say it doesn't. Um, the only burden it puts on me or the only thing at the back of my mind. And it's so funny. I was, walk, I was going to my auntie in Kumase Market. At that time, I had only done two albums. And a lady who sells peanut butter picked me up. She, she, she said, Mommy, I said, yes. 
Then she started blessing me. Mm. She started blessing me and she said, Explain it in ordinary English. May God grant you the spirit to finish well, to arrive. Hmm. So you didn't end in the middle. Right. You, you're carrying it through. Integrity, excellence, truthfulness, loyalty, so that nothing negative is found in you. And I remember that statement so clearly, and it's one of my prayers. God, grant me the grace to complete and finish this race well. And I think with that at the back of my mind, and that prayer being said, and God being a prayer answering God, we're where we are today. I was trying to spell Yekudru. Yekudru. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Don't let the, the Ashantis the, the, the bring an, you trouble. The anointing to finish. The anointing I'll to finish. I'll simplify it that way. Yes, that's it. The anointing to finish. You come across as somebody who works with a very strong sense of mission. Mm. Even the way you articulate your thoughts. You mentioned specific moments where you met specific people, people. who left specific deposits. Have you always been this driven and this, this focused? I don't even know. Am I, am I focused? I. <laughs> I mean, but, you, there's no way anyone would listen to you. That, I mean, I, on Monday I listened to you with Kojo, and I was walking. Mm. I was walking, and I knew we'd be having this conversation. So I just wanted to hear your previous interview, and I was, I was transfixed. I was walking, but I was, I was like, man, you started with Jesus in school like that. I said, yeah, I, said, yeah, I like that. I like, I like people who are spiritual by hip. That's a personal, <laughs> that's a personal thing for me. I know. I think, I, I think Christianity shouldn't be boring. No, so it shouldn't. I, I, yes, it shouldn't I, I like when you started all. with that one. You said, you, you, you said it's school, school like that. I said, yeah, <laughs> that's my kind of girl. I said, great. But, 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 but it was very compelling. And I was mm. listening very intently. But you've been mm. even more compelling this evening. And wow. something that you say is bound to stay in the minds and hearts of people. Mm. Mm. On social media, you have a tremendous following. Mm. Tell me about the experience on social media with your your, your fans, your mm. followers. How, how is it like? We've been around for a while on social media. We have organically grown. We've amassed this following. I think one by the grace of God, two by the messages God gave us that we put out, three by the songs we, we sing and also the lives that we live. You know, we, we, we're always thinking, will this benefit someone? Praying it doesn't offend anybody. Living the life like what you see is what you get. Who is we? You keep saying we. Who is we? When I say we, myself, the husband, the kids, the family, the team. And so I have access to the page. I work. So, I, you, so you say so this team there in Hamilton? Yeah, Team DH. You're big, you're big on team. <laughs> I am very big on team. Right. And, and, and I think... Um, COVID actually opened, kind of got me closer to Team DH. When I say, because then we were at home. Mm. We were at home at that time. And then we had social and the internet at our fingertips. And people had time. So I got the chance to bond with the people that are interested in ministry, but they seem very distant from me. I had the chance to do Facebook Live, where I brought them on. We could do a Zoom and bring some people on and we had a wow. chat. And we had live worship sessions. I could be doing Facebook Live. No keyboard is there. I just sang a song. And when the song was done, a, um, a sound engineer would just pick the song, play a keyboard on it. and No. No, it's a song Shall on YouTube. Work in progress. Work yes. Work in progress. It's another, I think it's probably made, what many people <laughs> Help me raised, back. raised the yes. and said, hey, hold on a second. Yes, that's, that's true. Some, there's something about that song. I'll particular. tell you. I'll tell you that something about that song. I'll tell you what it was. And every time I'm advising fellow musicians, anybody who's aspiring to be, I say to them, never let any situation pass you by. Mm. And so, work in progress. And a song like Yehovah Beshe, mm. I had those two songs when my father was dying. Wow. And um, I was called from the UK, my sister was a nurse, is a nurse in the US, and she called and said, if you want to see your dad in the States, you know him to be, because it's going to get bad, and going to get bad real fast, and so come. So I jumped on the flight the following day, and I went, and when I went, my dad was there sitting, that's why they had all sat with him for a long time, and that day they wanted to leave, go have a rest, and I sat with him in the hospital. And so I sat there, bear in mind, 
my lifelong experience with him. And as a nurse, I watched him knowing he was going to die. And things were running through my mind. What am I going to do? Ministry-wise, who was going to critique my songs? Who was I going to call to say, I'm stuck on these lyrics? What message can I put in there? What verse would help me? What, what, what this? Whilst I was thinking about this, the two of us, myself and my dad, we began singing this song. You're joking. Yehoah Beshe. Oh. Yehoah Beshe. And that's where we sang that song. We sang it for a long time until the rest of the family joined us. That was the beginning of that song. And then he died. When he died, reality set in. I had forgotten we had gotten that song. But I was kicking myself, beating myself. God, why can you take him away at this time when I need him the most? And at that time, I had done three albums and I thought I was doing well. And I was like, now that he's gone, what am I going to do? Because the, the, the words of men can hit you. Because people around me made me think that I was getting there because my dad was there. And now he had been taken away. And the human part of me was telling me my, my ministry life was over. Right. And then God rebuked me. God hit me. And the song was bred out of yeah. this. You know, when you, talked about, when you talked about that last moment, singing the song with him, tears came into my eyes because yeah. that was very, very poignant. And mm. you know, Bible talks about King Josh when mm. Elijah was about to die, to die, crying out and saying, my father, my father, mm. the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. Sometimes you just feel like this is it. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. And then God says, no, this no, is just the beginning. beginning. Yeah. And then you look back and you're like, wow. Yeah. And, and it's so funny that people would say, just a few years ago, no, they were in progress by. But it was there long ago. It was there a long time ago. You know what? Let me just tell you the 10 lessons I've learned from listening to you. And then oh, I'm going to wow. allow you a minute to just minister in any way you want. I'm just, <laughs> because I'm just enjoying this so much. I mean, I just want to do the conventional ending to this. So if you are the one who likes notes like me, the 10 lessons I've learned from Diana Hamilton, one, mentoring. She says, many are in a hurry to walk out of mentoring, but stay in it. And she says, the three people that she talked about that struck me the most, the role of her father, Francis Aje, and then Madame Eunice Addison of the Church of Pentecost. So mentoring. Number two, she mastered a craft by seven, and she mentioned 10 years of singing as a backup, background vocalist for Francis Aje. That was very notable. And then the third one, she talked about being ready at all times and growing up in a culture where you, I know even told you are singing, you, you come ready. And when you are called upon, you deliver. I like the soldiering part, soldier, being ready at all times. Number four, she talked about the family who are her greatest cheerleaders and also her greatest critics and keep her feet on the ground. Number five, my favorite. Every stage in my life has led to where I am now. And if you take out anything, I wouldn't be here today. That was so scary, Diana. No, but that was true. That's so true. scary. Number six, respect and appreciate others. Whatever you respect, you attract. Number seven, it's only a matter of time. Mm. Timing, timing. Number eight, the purpose of God for your life will ultimately come to pass. Number nine, from your producer, as much as you learn to do something, learn how not to do something and then the tenth one is the values of integrity excellence truthfulness and loyalty you mentioned them as the anointing to mm -hmm. finish which you call Nashanti what <laughs> these are my <laughs> 10 lessons from Diana Hamilton I'll say a true book Diana, have, have you thought about writing a book I have never thought about writing a but book. I'm telling you to write a book oh. <laughs> let's talk about it Yes, sir. I think you owe it to your fans. Imagine with about a million followers on social media writing mm. a book and giving them a chance to internalize some of these lessons and principles. Mm -hmm. And really, all you need to do is dictate it and then mm. get an, a writer to write for you. But mm. I suspect that the way you are so articulate and so full of conviction, if somebody took the mechanical process of writing, your thoughts will so flow that mm. the chapters will just be stanzas Versus. and verses <laughs> and bridges <laughs> and descants. Diana, it's been such a beautiful oh, conversation thank you. with you. And I would like to ask you, you to take us home with, with ministry in any way you want. A wow. song, a prayer, wow. anything that you want to do. But this is wow. just your platform. Just go wow. ahead. Father, I, I thank you tonight. I bless your holy, marvelous, matchless name. 
So I'm having a chat with Reverend O'Cronin. I'm just looking back at how your grace has brought me where I am. And we're forever grateful, grateful to you. Thank you for this opportunity to have this conversation. Because I know that if we hadn't met, someone out there would not have been blessed. And so I pray tonight that bless he who you wish to bless, mm. that visit he who you need to visit, that sustain, that you heal, that you give a message, that you come through for he who requires you so bad. You are our present help in times of need. You are our present help in times of need. Right now, someone is waiting on you for something. The fruit of the womb, an open heavens, favor, grace. Lord, you have all these in abundance. And so I pray that you pour this on your people, a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Let this be available to your people. And I pray that if anyone doesn't know you after this conversation, after this prayer, cause them to have an encounter with you, that they will know you for themselves, not because they've been pushed into it, but they have found you and you have proven yourself faithful to them. We thank you. I commit the whole team into your hands, Lord. Bless, keep, protect, grant peace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. And for the third time, amen. amen. <laughs> I've enjoyed this conversation so much. It's been very wow. different and very wow. special. And I if want to I'm say a God. big God bless you. Amen. amen. And God bless Thank your you. husband. God bless amen. your entire team. And may amen. the years ahead be even more beautiful. Amen. That same God who assured you when your father passed mm. that this is only the beginning. Mm. May he bring you to a place next year and amen. next two years and next amen. five years where you say, wow, I amen. thought this was great, but... That was just a foundation. foundation. May God honor you. Amen. And may God confirm everything he said to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, this has very, been a very different edition of Springboard of Virtual University, hanging out with Dinah Hamilton, the, the hottest property in town, who said Jesus, Jesus is cool like that. And we've had a tremendous, tremendous time on the, the very first edition of In the Engine Room, finding out about the part of the back from that Madame Eunice Addison that was so beautiful and everything else that she's gone to, including seven, ten years as a back, backup artist just to hone her craft. A big thank you to MTN Pulse, the enterprise group, for loaning Diana to us and for you to UMB Bank for, for being there and also to our media partners, the multimedia group and the graphic communications group. A big thank you to Comfort and the entire Springboard team. Yeah, yeah. So till then, <laughs> till we meet at Diana's book launch. <laughs> My name is Albert saying, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. Yeah.